I know this is cheating, but remember a couple weeks ago when we did Night of Living Dead? Well, they also ran it in color! Night of the Living Dead is a 1968 zombie horror flick directed by George Romero and starring Dwayne Jones, Judith O'Day, Carl Hardman, Marilyn Eastman, Keith Wayne, Judith Ridley, Kyra Schoen, William Hinsman, George Kazana, and Russell Striner. The film opens with some sweet Pontiac excitement as Barbara and Johnny travel to the cemetery to put flowers on their father's grave. Yeah, a little spit and polish, you can clean this up. Sell it next year. Wonder how many times we bought the same one. After discovering the fake flowers industry's dirty little secret and putting on some sweet driving gloves, Johnny drops one of the most immortal quotes in cinematic history. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Barbara gets attacked by either a zombie or your typical Pennsylvania backwoods local, but Johnny gets some horseplay in with the gentleman before winding up dead. Thank God, because Johnny was being a whiny bitch the entire time. Barbara escapes the menace and ends up at a farmhouse that hopefully is more interesting than season two of The Walking Dead. <laughs> Hey, come on guys, we'll have a barbecue later. Ben arrives to save Barbara from taxidermy and begins boarding up the house. Barbara loses her shit and Ben handles things like men did back then. Your brother is dead. No! My brother is not dead! <laughs> what did the hand say to the face? Ben finishes hammering, finds a gun, burns a chair, and then the people hiding in the cellar decide to come out. Hey, thanks for securing the house while we were hiding down the basement doing jack shit. There's instant conflict over staying upstairs versus barricading themselves in the basement. Is that guy wearing a toga? Tom and Judy opt to not hang with Mr. Cooper and he descends down to the basement. Harry relays what's up, and when Helen finds out they have a radio, she rushes upstairs because she really wants to listen to King Biscuit Flower Hour, abandoning her injured daughter in the process. All right, TV, let's watch Laugh-In. Baby, it's Mommy. I heard. Oh, Mommy, it's Mommy. I heard. That's rigor mortis setting in, darling. They decide to make a break for it with Harry demonstrating how he deals with trick-or-treaters. Tom and Ben make a rush for the gas pump by the barn. Oh, Judy wants to go too, calling shotgun and forcing Ben to the bed of the truck. Hey, remember that barbecue? I think it's good. Come and get it. At this point, Harry decides to say fuck it and locks the door on Ben, who busts in like a badass, secures it, and then whips some ass. <laughs> The zombies move toward the burning truck with the determination of co-workers after donuts. Look! She got a hamburger. This only serves to whet the appetites of the undead as they begin a full attack on the house. Hey, this guy wants to go clubbing. Harry decides it's time for a coup, but Ben fills his belly full of lead. Barbara becomes coherent enough to assist Ben in securing the house, while the Coopers become a late dinner for their daughter. Johnny returns and we learn why he put those damn driving gloves on earlier in the movie. So you know who the hell it was. He pulls her into the sea of inhumanity and Ben finally retreats into the basement as the zombies overrun the house. And Ben kills some Coopers. Wait a minute. Ben Cooper? The Halloween Mask Company? Coincidence? 
or psychic phenomena. The next morning, the house is clear. The rescuers are on their way, and Ben decides to go upstairs. All right, Vince, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. What? Ironically, he becomes a barbecue himself. Night of the Living Dead stands as one of the great horror films and stands as a step in the evolution of that genre. Along with Psycho, this film is grounded in reality. There are no space aliens, no Eastern European monsters, just your neighbors wanting to eat your flesh. It's also a great examination of human nature. It's really funny that after all the fighting earlier in the movie about where to go, Ben winds up in the basement anyway. Too bad everyone's dead. And Ben winds up dead too, but not killed by the monsters, but by the people who were supposed to be his rescuers. This is a classic horror film that really set the stage for the upcoming 1970s and beyond. Watch it. Love it. It's one of the best. Good shot. Okay, he's dead. Let's go get him. That's another one for the fire.